Everybody, it's Tyler here at the Texas Championship. Checking team number 148, Robo Wranglers. And to help me out, talking more about this team, I have Millie, Jillian, Michael, and Mari. And this robot here, Robo Wranglers are great every year, but this robot has really been, I think, a special place on this team. Uh, been doing absolutely phenomenal this year. Of uh, course, they're slick. Uh, look that they have, but also amazing performance. We'll be going through that cargo journey. Uh, talking about their climber, you gotta check out the top of their climber here and what goes into that. I can't wait to hear more about it coming up here on Behind the Bumpers. Your destination for first content, updates, and gaming. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. First updates now, supported by Striker Careers. If you are a college student or recent graduate looking for an incredible internship, take a look at Striker. Striker provides a housing stipend, great pay, and an opportunity to work with state-of-the-art medical technology equipment. Discover why so many first alumni are coming to Striker for their internship or career at careers.stryker.com. First updates now, supported by Kettering University. Kettering University hosts three co-op employment fairs each year for incoming and current students. Participating in the co-op employment process at Kettering is a great way to begin turning robotics experience into a professional career to earn money towards graduating debt-free. If you are a senior, it is not too late to apply at kettering.edu slash apply. Millie, we're going to start out uh, talking about the drive on your robot, actually. So talk to me a little bit more about your uh, drive pods this year and maybe any changes from previous years as well. Um, so our drive this year is Swerve like we've had in the past, um, but we actually use Swerve X inverted this time. And so the Falcons are like towards the bottom instead of just having on top because it was sure. really a waste of space and we're only running over one like wire berm like type thing and unlike past years where we went over multiple all the time. And so we thought, you know what, have the Falcons at the bottom. Um, and so we're able to swerve like out of the way for defenders. And like if they have us pinned against the wall, we can just move out of the way real quick. Why was swerve so important to you uh, this year? Was it just to avoid defense or did you look at it as kind of a compliment to your targeting as well? Uh, compliment to car targeting. We do have a turret that he'll talk about later. Yeah. But like it's just allows us to smoothly glide across the and lastly, what would you say to teams who are looking at maybe trying Swerve for the first time for future years? I think you should do it. Like, just try it out. Um, I really like it. It's helped us a lot. We've been really good. Just get a driver that knows how to drive it. That, that is really important, too, having yes. the right driver uh, for that as well. Absolutely. Uh, let's keep moving on. We're going to talk as we go into the uh, intake of your robot here. Uh, so we're going to hand it over to Jillian. Uh, Jillian, I want to hear uh, more about not just what it is, but like how did you come up with this type of intake and then any changes you might have made uh, throughout the season so far for it too. Okay. Um, we came up with this intake because we went through di several different mini prototypes this season. And because the balls bounce, we needed to make sure when we went down to uh, pick up the balls that we could keep it at a lower stance so they wouldn't bounce out and we were able to grab them so this thing kind of like comes down this uh, it comes down and it's able to grab the balls at a lower stance and we have this which inside which is going to push them that way um, and we have de multiple rollers to keep a good grip on them because of their material and when leaning up against the walls to bring the balls in, we were destroying these uh, side foam wheels. Yeah. And so we made these finger guns on our sides to be able to keep them from falling apart. I'm sorry, what are those called? They're called finger guns. Finger guns, all right, gotcha. Uh, yeah, because our robot's name is Quick Jaw, yeah. so we kind of have like the little joke <laughs> about it. Uh, I want to ask you on your intake here. Uh, so your team, I think this is kind of unique where it's a, it's a main just structure that's not moving, right? And then you're gearing here uh, instead. What made you choose to go like a full mechanical route for it versus some teams are using, you know, pneumatics or a four bar or anything like um, that? It just works better for us than having pneumatics because we have more control over it ourselves. And it like because we like to be able to come back up for like our hanging mech our hanging uh, structure and all different types of things we do. Well, let's keep moving on in your robot. We're going to go into your indexer and shooter forward. Michael's going to talk a little bit more about what's going into that. So, uh, so as you're going, as you intake a cargo, talk to me about like anything from like any sensors that go into it yeah. uh, as we go into your shooter. Then we'll talk, of course, more about that too. All right. So when we intake a ball, as Julian said earlier, it moves this way and it enters this part of the robot, which is a 3D printer part with Velcro on it and it'll move it up into this indexer part where when it touches this limit switch, it'll stop, then that's where the ball is in this index position. 
Alongside that, we have a color sensor here, so we know what color ball it is. And if it's the wrong color ball for our lines, we can do things like spit it out in like another direction, just so the other lines can't grab it. Can you spit it out like both both through your shooter and through your through your intake as well, we, like in case you like take in two in a row or something like that? We mainly just shoot it out like vertically. Out okay. Of and it will just like bounce around on the field. Makes sense. All right, and then when we're ready to shoot, it'll enter into this part of the robot. And this is our sh uh, shooter. You can see it's mounted on a uh, routered gear. And this is what allows us to move our turret basically 360 degrees all around. Do you know how many degrees of motion you're getting on your turret? Uh, around like 320-ish. 270? Yeah. You can go all around, but sure. you can't really shoot in this position because the hangar is there. Yeah, I probably wouldn't advise that, huh? So, yeah, yeah. for sure. So, and then we're uh, for uh, 148, where would you say like your sweet spot is on the field? I mean, uh, you know, you're able to shoot from all over, but like where do you really like to shoot from? I'd say around um, probably the truss area. Sure. Where the hangar are. Yeah. Um, and then when, when you're looking at, uh, this whole combination going in, uh, it seems to me like your team, like the, the motions themselves are just very smooth as they go through, right? Like we see a lot of teams who are just kind of like just reach way. Like what is your advice to teams who are looking at just kind of getting like that full cycle time down just a little bit more and just making it a very smooth process? What would you say to other teams? I'd say um, tuning is probably the most important thing. Sure. Tuning your shots, tuning your indexer to make it like go properly in here. And like just lots of time, just perfecting everything. Well, Mario, we're going to talk about your uh, climber, uh, which I think looks just so cool. So I'd love to hear more about uh, the mechanical aspect of it. And then uh, if we can show off the climb sequence as well, too, that'd be really cool to uh, hear more about. So tell us about it. Yeah, of course. So once we go to the hanging sequence and, well, for one, we start climbing at the second bar. So when we get there, our climber is actually all the way down like this. And if you come over, well, it's sort of hard to see, but we zip tie this. We zip tie that part of the climber to the bottom, and then when we want to hang, we will just try to rotate this a little bit, and then it'll shoot right up because of these constant motion springs right here. So walk us through each step as uh, we're going through it. So this is climber mode. So first off, we come up to the second bar, and we're going to lock on to, we're gonna lock on to the bottom. And then we're going to rotate our arm until we can lock on to the top, to the, until we lock on to the third round. And then we're gonna rotate again. And this is where we hook on to the traversal round. And then we lift our arm up. So we're hanging on that traversal round. As we wrap up here, uh, talk to me about these uh, specific these locking mechanisms, like what's gone into that and, and how they work in general. So our, um, these clamps right here, how they work is whenever we come up to a bar, it's gonna push on these little hooks right here and lock in place. So then the bar can't escape at all and we can, we're sort of free to rotate. Then once we need to leave those bars, these linear uh, servos right here, are gonna move this uh, panel back and forth and basically release these hooks. So it comes in, we release, and then we can just go right back out. Well, 148 Robo Wranglers, uh, obviously uh, an amazing team that we love to follow every year. You, you all build such incredible robots, but your passion that goes into it too, you can clearly tell uh, that you're absolutely uh, uh, engaged with what's going on in this program. I'd love to hear more about it. So thank you so much for taking the time. Uh, talk to us about it, and I wish you the best of luck here and, of course, uh, at the World Championship as well. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thanks to Kettering University for their support of this video. Kettering University hosts three co-op employment fairs each year for incoming and current students. Participating in the co-op employment process at Kettering is a great way to begin turning robotics experience into a professional career to earn money towards graduating debt-free. If you are a senior, it is not too late to apply at kettering.edu apply. Thanks to Stryker Careers for their support in this video. First alumni and mentors are making Stryker a top priority for their internships and careers. That's because Stryker knows that those in first are the leaders and innovators of tomorrow. If you want to help make the world a better place by creating life-saving medical devices and technology, get started at careers.stryker.com. Thanks for watching.
If you want to join us for future fun streams, be sure to click the follow button and turn on the notification bell to know when we're live. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. View archives and unique content at youtube.com forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now and check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.